This new estimate supports a study that was done in the 1990s that the CDC ignored for 23 years. In 2007, my daughter was bit by a tick dismantling her dreams of going to college. <coughs> And since then, she has lived with excruciating joint pain, autonomic dysfunctions that include her heart, blood pressure, and digestive system. She has suffered paralysis, seizures, cognitive inabilities, mental breakdowns, and suicidal thoughts. Her body is riddled with spirochetes, which is also the same type of corkscrew bacteria that you find in syphilis that has jumped to the, the bloodstream and infiltrated the barriers of her brain. This could have all have been avoided if reliable testing had been available to her, if just one of the 20 Oregon doctors she'd seen refused the limiting guidelines outlined by the IDSA. This only supports a protocol of six weeks antibiotics, a protocol that doesn't even acknowledge the 350 co-infections that can piggyback with Lyme disease. Instead, now she's facing a lifetime of chronic illness and permanent damage to all her biological systems. I asked since during the International Confer Lyme Conference in 2013, when the CDC finally fessed up to the severity of this problem, Oregon was listed as one of the states with a high incidence of Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. Particularly in Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans of Oregon joining the 12 other states that have bills or pending bills to protect Lyme treating physicians or of mandating insurance coverage? Is Oregon doing anything to help chronic Lyme patients or making the public aware that Lyme is a devastating disease that has ruined countless Oregonian lives? Well, I don't know uh, what Oregon is doing. I've supported the money for the National Institutes of Health to research uh, both uh, better treatments and uh, vaccines. Uh, there are some experimental vaccines out there uh, that could uh, help prevent Lyme's disease, and the federal government is doing some research on that. Uh, in terms of insurance coverage, I would assume that Lyme's disease, like any other uh, illness uh, would be covered under, I, I don't know, it, uh, an insurance exclusion for Lyme's disease. Uh, you know, so it should be covered under the Affordable Care Act. You couldn't preclude your daughter from getting coverage because she had Lyme's disease. They'd have to sell her a policy. Uh, so, uh, you know, on a, on a federal level, it's been covered. I'm not a state legislator. Uh, I don't know what the state might be doing uh, on its own to deal with this issue. Uh, you know, you'd have to talk to a state legislator or the governor about that. So, you know, that's what's going on at the national level. It is a, it is a big problem. Uh, there is an awareness issue among a lot of people. The treatments are fairly uh, primitive at this point in time, not adequate. I do know some people who have gone through, and women talk about alternative therapies, alternative therapies who've had some success. Uh, but uh, it's still something where we don't have a definitive cure. Uh, we don't have a great treatment, and we don't have a vaccine, and uh, they're doing research now to develop those things. So, uh, yes. 